The Compendium Maleficarum by Francesco Maria Guazzo Book 3, Chapter 4, Section 11 Of Holy or Lustral Water At Würzburg, in the year 1583, a priest's house not far from the city was, ha was haunted either by an evil spirit or by some illusion. The priest himself and his confidential servants used to say that everything in the house was hurled violently to the floor. Moreover, lighted torches, even when placed in great numbers in a room free from all drafts, were blown out at one puff. Beds were forcibly dragged away from them when they went to lie on them, and many of the servants had such an obstruction in the throat that they were nearly suffocated. Finally, many horrible things were seen and heard in the house. The wretched priests at his uh, the wretched priest at his wit's end went to other priests and told them how he was being plagued and asked the rector to depute some priest to be his protection. One was entrusted with this duty and towards evening went fasting to the place. But hardly had he crossed the threshold before he himself saw what he had been told of. For in the actual sight, both of him and his companion, a slaver was hurled against the wall with such force and violence that it frightened those presently nearly to death. This priest bade them all be of good heart and urged the parish priest to prepare to approach the tribunal of penance. And then putting on a surplice and stole, he went up to the upper part of the house where the demon was chiefly wont to rage. He employed the usual rites of the church for putting demons to flight, and when there was no answer and no presence was evoked by the priest's voice, he turned to exhorting the servants especially to throw aside heresy and to expiate their sins by a good confession. Then, having duly purified the place, he returned to his house with a great harvest of souls, for it is agreed that many were reclaimed from heresy to the church, and that the house was freed from all its former molestation, as the parish priest afterwards testified. We read in Epiphanes of a certain Josephus who, while he was yet a Jew, restored a sick man to health by making the sign of the cross upon him with water. Palladius testifies the same of a woman whom through magic glamour seemed to be changed into a mare, for when Saint Macarius blessed water and having prayed sprinkled it upon her head, it became clear to all that the woman stood there in her own proper shape. Theodoret records when Bishop Marcellus was destroying the temple of Jupiter at Epimea, he saw a black demon restraining the force of the flames so that they should not consume the wooden material. He fortified and blessed water with the sign of the cross and ordered it to be thrown upon the flames, and the evil spirit could not endure this conduct and fled. But the flames were aroused by the water as if it had been oil and consumed the temple in a moment. St. Theodore, the, the, Archiman, the, Archim, the Archimandrite, used to drive away all harms with holy water, even sickness caused by demons, as he did from that, from that, fen, from that fentanus near Tendet, from ten, ten, ten Tendia, who met a demon in the form of a dog, which by merely gaping at him struck him with a most grievous malady, and as he did from the house of one Theodore, a tribune, where both men and all the animals were tormented by demons, so that when they would dine, stones were hurled upon the table, to the great terror of all, and the women's beds were broken, and the house was infested by so many snakes and mice that everybody was afraid to enter it. So the servant of God went in and spent the whole night worshipping and praying to God, and by sprinkling the whole house with holy water delivered it from the unclean spirits. This we learn from Gregory the priest, whom we have often quoted. He recalls also the following, illustri <coughs> the following illustrious miracle. The inhabitants of a village in the district of Como had killed an ox in order to feed upon the roasted flesh, but it so happened that all who ate of it became ill and lay as if they were dead, and whatever meat they had left went black and stinking. 
those, therefore, who had not tasted of the meat told what had happened to a holy man, who answered that the misfortune must have come from a company of demons in the cooking pots, and since he could not at that time go with them, he blessed water and sent it by one of the brethren to sprinkle it over those who were in danger, and to offer it to them to drink. And this was done. when this was done, they all arose as if from sleep, except one who was dead, for this man's brother, John the Bailiff, would not wait for the blessing of the servant of God, but ran for help to a witch, and while he was applying her charm to his brother, he lost his life. Great armies of devils invaded the dwelling of St. Hubert, the Bishop of, Li of, of, of Liege, a veritable scourge of demons. Seeing this, the man of God said to his page, Go and let there be brought here water, which a priest has consecrated by mingling salt therewith, and which has been impregnated by the power of prayer for putting to flight the enemy's malice, and oil, that is, the charism, blessed by apostolic authority, for by the, ap for by the aspersion and unction of, those, of these the pestilent phantasms of the enemy will soon be so routed that he will not dare to renew his machinations. So says the anonymous author, that disciple of St. Hubert who wrote A Life of the Saint. In the year 1583 at, R at Riga, one Ruthenus was often admonished to return to the bosom of the Roman Church, but he always refused to listen and went away impen impenitent. But from that time various specters were seen by his servants in the house, the tables were, re were removed from them when they sat down, yet there was no one to be seen. The bedroom doors, although secured not only with bolts, but with, but with bars across them, were torn right off their hinges. From the top of the house were hurled huge stones covered with pitch, which the Jesuit father writes that he himself has handled. And a certain Pole, whom that priest asserts that he saw, was so grievously wounded upon the head that he lay half dead for some days. There was also much straw in that house, and this was all cut up into the most minute pieces. In short, these and other such terrible manifestations led the man to have no doubt that Satan had taken possession of that house as his by right. The priest whom I have mentioned went into the house with one companion and purified it with holy water and incense, and by this exorcism all the disturbance of the demons was allayed, wherefore they returned great thanks in the house of God. About 1587 the Jesuits established a colony at, at, Pazco, at Pazcuaro in Mexico. Here there was an Indian woman with a child, and every night when she slept it seemed as if the child were snatched from her side and then replaced, but she did not know where he was taken to. Meanwhile, the boy himself lost strength every day and was slowly wasting to his death. He was brought into the church and was saved by the application of holy water with prayer. In 1588, the following year, a peasant woman of, of Trevay offered a man some eggs. The man's lackey took the eggs in his hat, and after removing them, replaced his hat upon his head, and was at once stricken with such pain that he nearly went mad. Not knowing what he was doing, he rushed into a church and plunged his burning head into the holy water stoop where, which stood there, and was cured. The witch, on being seized and examined, said that the eggs had been so poisoned that they would kill whoever ate them, and would cause those who touched them to swell. At Pont de Monson in Lorraine, in the year 1593, a virgin of advanced age was subject to such fits that she was held to be possessed. Another woman was bewitched, and another tormented by an evil spirit. After a priest had recited litanies, and they had drunk holy water, and had hung blessed Agnes days about their necks, they came to their senses, and, after confessing their sins, soon departed this life while they were intent upon their prayers. Francisco Lopez Gomara, in his Historia Mexicana, testifies that among the Indians 
there were three chief remedies against the illusions and apparitions of demons, the worshipful presence of the most potent sacrament of the Eucharist, the crucifix, and holy water. And he says that the Kakodemons themselves have confessed as much to the Indians more than once. For these and more in the Sophia, the Sources of Sophia G series, please feel free to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification icon so that you can be informed when the next installment arrives. And especially if these prove to be good fruit in your life. I'm Ignotus Amicus. Ave Maria. <laughs>